In the last video, we went through the two fundamental steps of machine learning, writing out a probability model, then fitting it using maximum likelihood estimation, which, as the name says, means we have to maximize a function. For most models, we can't do the maximization with pen and paper, so we have to use numerical optimization on a computer. There's one particular numerical algorithm called gradient descent, which is the workhorse of all deep learning. Here's a nice quote about it. Gradient descent can write code better than you. I'm sorry. Software 1.0 is code we write. Software 2.0 is code written by optimization. What the author here means is this. Parameters for a neural network trained according to maximum likelihood estimation. That's what he means by software 2.0. Humans aren't out of the loop in this bright new world. Software 2.0 still needs humans to decide what to optimize, i.e. the likelihood function, and that's what comes from the probability model. In this course, we're not going to worry about how the numerical optimizer works. In any useful branch of machine learning, chances are there's some special purpose optimizer that's most efficient for that particular branch of machine learning. We'll just look at good general purpose optimizer, fine for small problems. This is how we optimize. Define the function, import scipy.optimize, make an initial guess, and then simply call scipy.optimize.fmin. A few things to watch out for. There is no optimize.fmax function. If you want to maximize, just stick a minus far sign in front of the thing you want to maximize and then minimize it. This routine isn't going to find a global minimum necessarily. You need maths if you want to guarantee a global minimum. This function only finds a local minimum, so you ought to have an idea of what your function looks like and you ought to choose the initial guess wisely. That's all there is to optimization, except for one little problem. In machine learning, we often want to find an optimum over a constrained domain, for example, over x above or equal to zero, like in this next example. Find the maximum over sigma above zero of f of sigma equals blah, blah, blah. Scipy.optimize.fmin, when you run it, it will range across any values at once looking for the minimum. If we did the optimization over sigma and it's fmin straight across sigma equals zero, the denominator goes to zero and the numerator goes to zero too. So the function has the potential to blow up with divide by zero and we'll have problems. So the best thing to do is to stop SciPy from even looking at sigma less than zero. The hint tells us how. Optimize over some other variable tau, allowed to be positive or negative, and transform it into sigma by setting sigma equals e to the tau. Now we can get to any valid sigma at all by choosing the right tau, of course, so we're not restricting ourselves by this and the transform ensures that we will only ever look at positive sigma. Here's the code. First, I'm defining my function f. Here, I'm defining it as a function of tau, and I do the transform to sigma inside the function on line 7. Next, I call the optimizer, and I want it to maximize f, i.e. I want it to minimize minus f. There's a special bit of Python syntax here, the lambda notation. This is a way to define an anonymous function. I could perfectly well have defined a new function, neg f, like this, to return minus f, and then minimize neg f directly, but I'm never going to use neg f again, so there's no point remembering that name, and the lambda notation just lets me do that more concisely. Here I've chosen the initial value of sigma to be 2, in other words, I chose tau to be log 2, and I got to that number just by sketching a graph of the function on the computer. It came out looking something or other like this. So 2 is the same starting point. Next example. Find the maximum of some function f, which takes three arguments p1, p2, p3, over p1, p2, p2, p3, they have to be in the range 0 to 1 and they have to sum up to 1. There's a transform we can use for this. It's widely used in machine learning and it's called the softmax transform. 
What we'll do instead is we'll optimize over different parameters, S1, S2, S3 in wheels cubed, and use the following transform. Here, the exponentiation ensures that we get positive values, even if s is negative, and the normalization, the division, forces p1 plus p2 plus p3 to be equal to 1. Because they're positive and because they sum up to 1, each must be less than or equal to 1. And if you just look at this transform, we can see any p we can achieve by choosing a suitable s. So we're not limiting ourselves by this transformation. Here's the code. I'll define a function. The way SciPy works, I have to call a function of a single parameter. Here I'll call it theta. Theta will be a tuple. It will consist of s1, s2, s3. First, uh, unpack s1, s2, s3, then compute the function we want after transforming into p's. OK, so machine learning is all about inventing probability models and then training them using maximum likelihood estimation, usually by computer. All we need now is some interesting probability models. That's what the next two videos are all about, learning the building blocks for putting together rich and expressive probability models.